It was like the golf had popped out of the future. I still have a Golf 1 in my collection. A Golf looks great on everybody. This incredible success story begins in May 1974. That's when the Golf 1 made its showroom debut. For drivers of the Beetle, it was like nothing they'd seen before. The Beetle was round and soft and sweet. So this was a total 180. It was sharp, angular, unique. It really shook things up. And that definitely contributed to the Golf's unbelievable success. The 70s were about bell bottoms, flower power, Saturday night fever. Germany was soccer world champion. Everyone was listening to ABBA, and this was cutting edge communication. It was very functional. Lots of storage space, room for five adults. The car got good mileage, it was fast, extremely safe, had the most modern technology, bullseye. Water cooling and a straight engine replaced air cooling and a boxer engine. Front wheel drive replaced rear wheel drive. Even though the Golf did everything differently than the Beetle, in just two and a half years there were a million on the road. You have so many memories connected to the Golf, and it's just an awesome car. They got me a Golf 1 for 900 Deutschmarks, light blue. Oh man, your first car. You have so many great memories. Those sweet moments at the drive-in movie theater. The bosses realized what a prize they had in the Golf, and they did the right thing by passing on those same values, but at the same time reinterpreting them to fit the times. Our first tour car was my red Golf 2. Through the 80s and up to the 90s, it was a symbol of a certain lifestyle and youthfulness. Volkswagen took the Golf concept a step further, bringing out the Golf 2 in August 1983. The new model was 17 centimeters longer and much more spacious. <laughs> it really is crazy to think we fit our entire equipment in that car. We're talking a whole drum set, guitar amps. Okay, back then the amps were small, but still. Two instruments, a mic stand. Instrumente? Yeah. Mikrofon, Mikrofonständer. That really is crazy, actually, that can't be true. The second generation Golf was a bit softer, a bit more accommodating, not quite as angular. It had features that made it more modern. Add-ons included anti-lock brakes, power steering, power locks, and power windows. For the first time, all the interior sheet metal parts were covered. The Golf 2 was the car of the 80s, back when Gorbachev's Paris Troika led to the end of the Cold War. It was the start of the digital age, and the German pop duo Modern Talking had everybody talking. My first car was a Golf 2. It was all standard, so before I even got my driver's license and took it for its maiden voyage, I got it all souped up. It was always great on the road, great performance. Back then, the best in the world. The Golf 3 was the first to have fully integrated bumpers. That means instead of them being added on to the body of the car, they were part of it. That of course made the Golf very modern. The Golf 3 came out in late 1991 with significantly improved crash safety. Airbags were available for the first time. The Golf has become such a regular feature in our lives. I think anyone who's had any contact with cars has had a Golf at some point. The Golf 3 came with air conditioning, power windows, and several other comfort features. The interior of the Golf 3 was a big step toward greater comfort. In the 90s, all the kids were playing Game Boy. Titanic was the box office hit. The first mobile phones came on the market, and techno beats moved the masses. 
Golf hatte immer so eine starke Beziehung. Golf always had a strong connection to music that had to do with the special editions, but also with the fact that we always cranked up the music when we were in the car. I always drove with my two 90 CDs. The CD player would switch between the two. A classic. For me, the fourth generation golf was something very special. It was a huge leap. It was a totally fresh new interpretation, extremely modern and puristic. And that was not an easy feat. Volkswagen set a new bar for quality when it brought out the Golf 4 in October 1997. With a fully galvanized body, reduced gaps between parts, and an innovative new engine suspension that made the ride even smoother. It was the time when MP3s were pushing CDs out of existence. Madonna was flooding the charts with one hit album after the other, and the introduction of the Euro meant the biggest currency switch of all time. Another update to the Golf's design, for the first time the headlights were cased in clear glass. Suddenly you could look inside. It was like this little treasure chest with this unique projection technology inside. When they switched from the 3 to the 4, you thought, well, what's different? Then you'd look again and again and you'd think, wow, they really are ahead of the times. For me, the Golf 4 is one of the best designs. But at the time, it was like, I'm not even sure what they changed. And then it hit you and you couldn't get over it. For me, the Generation 4 Golf is a masterpiece. When you look at the lines of the Golf 5, you really notice this intense slope in the hood, the inclination of the windshield, and the fast look of the A-pillar that's very wedge-shaped. The Golf 5 came out in October 2003 with the first ever four-link wheel suspension. Several assistance systems and six airbags made the Golf considerably safer. For the first time, a direct shift gearbox with dual clutch transmission was also available on the Golf. While the Golf 5 was being built, Angela Merkel became Germany's first female leader. The whole country had a blast hosting the 2006 Soccer World Cup, and Robbie Williams songs became anthems for the masses. The Golf also kept in touch with the times, and the trend toward big vans. Also, wurde versucht, so we tried to give the interior as much space as possible. We moved the A-pillar farther forward. The hood was shortened optically, and that gave it a new outline. It's obvious, the Golf is a successful model. I'd say even the most successful model, because it's always been up to date. The Golf has always kept with the times and kept evolving. Extreme precision, the finest seams, an absolutely holistic, extremely distinctive appearance. In October 2008, Volkswagen took the technology and looks of the Golf 5 a step further, bringing out the Golf 6. It came with knee airbags on the driver's side and greatly improved interior soundproofing. When we designed the Generation 6 Golf, our main objective was bringing in advanced technologies and making them available to customers. Luxury class assistance systems became available, including Park Assist, adaptive chassis control, and tire pressure monitoring. In the years of the Golf 6, smartphones became the norm. James Cameron's 3D film Avatar was a huge hit, and Adele became one of the 21st century's most successful singers. No other car at that time had such sharp lines, such fine seams, such high quality materials, and such brilliant headlights. Wherever you looked, you could see that Volkswagen had reached the height of auto engineering. There were fewer lines, but they were more precise, more elegant, more dynamic. A longer hood that flowed into the roof. 
more incline in the A pillar. Nochmal liegendere A Säule. The Golf 7 debuted in September 2012 on Volkswagen's brand new MQB platform. It came with start-stop technology, brake energy regeneration, and multi-collision braking. All the motors were re-engineered. In 2014, the e-Golf and the plug-in GTE Hybrid also became available. While the Golf 7 was in production, Pharrell Williams got everyone dancing to his song Happy. Germany scored its fourth World Cup victory in Brazil, and the Golf 7 became a world champion too. In 2013, it won both World Car of the Year and European Car of the Year. You can see in every part of the Golf 7, from every angle, its sharp design, these extremely precise, very slender headlights, and its proud stance on the road. I don't think there's anyone who needs more car than a Golf. Golf. 